Freddie uh, Chelsea Welch has been named the Women's Horizon League Player of the Week. Congratulations to Chelsea. She had a great week, and I know she's more excited about two wins, you know, for your team against uh, Oakland and Detroit Mercy. And I thought to myself, is that Oakland game over yet? You know. It took I'm, forever. <laughs> tell me about it. Um, again, a lot of fouls going on. And, and, again, that is a very, very talented team that wasn't going to lay over and quit or die. And, um, again, we continue to work on figuring out how to keep our urgency um, over a 40-minute period. But, well, I'm happy that we were able to hold on. Have you ever been involved in a game like that? I understand the Raiders shot 48 free throws in the game. That set a record for women's basketball, the number of free throws attempted in that game. It's got to be nerve-rattling to be able to get through something like that, and really it's a mental test for your, for your team out there to come away with a win. It is, and again, there's so many different things that are thrown at you when you play. We just kind of take it in stride and, and just – you have to adjust to the game. Um, and honestly, I told them – in the third quarter that it was going to happen because the fouls were a little lopsided in the first half. Um, and I think that referees meet it at halftime and they say, okay, we've got this situation and, and what are we going to do about it? And I think they start calling the game closer and tighter. Uh, we concentrate a lot on not fouling and not giving up points at the free throw line. And I think that they were just being so aggressive um, that they were going to dare the referee to call right. every foul. They're forcing that so, situation. Yeah. You know, that's what we got. Well, uh, your team handled it well, obviously, by, you know, getting the win. But it was really tense there down the stretch. But uh, your team came up with some big plays to come away with that win, which are really important this time of year. It is. And, again, Mackenzie Taylor was awesome. Um, I think that she definitely stepped up when Chelsea was struggling in the first half. I mean, Chelsea started off 0 for 11. Um, and and that's, that's very foreign to her, obviously, and for the team, too. And uh, I was really proud of the ones that kind of rallied around her and, and picked her up until she – got a little fill again in the second half. Well, that's a little tease about the Oakland win. A lot of people here, I'm sure, were at the game, but we got some highlights for those watching on the video stream and also listening tonight. We'll describe uh, the two victories. First, we'll start with the win on Thursday against Detroit Mercy. For those here in the uh, TJ Chums, take a look at all the screens we have around here for the highlights. Okay, here we go. This one is, that's Emily's three against she hit a milestone this weekend, too. She did. She scored her 1,000 points. Um, there's Chelsea and her pull-up. Simone Simmons and her offensive rebound. Again, she just gives us so many different options because uh, she can knock down a three. She can get it to the rim and rebound, so that's always good. And a little sharing of the basketball there yeah. in transition. Emily Vogelpohl again. Yeah, she's so special defensively. Um, she anticip anticipates really well, and uh, she's taken a lot of pride in her defense this year. You know, getting a chance to watch these games this weekend uh, before the men's games, you just see the intensity, you know, and Emily, when she takes it to the floor, she's all serious. She is. I mean, she's one of the, the greatest competitors I've ever been around. Um, she will do anything for this team to win, and I mean anything. And I think that that says so much about her. Little ball screen pull up for Chelsea. A little help from Lex there. And there's Mackenzie Taylor again. <laughs> She's had some acrobatic finishes. That's a tough finishes. shot right there. She has. Well, what she, people take her for granted. And a lot of the time, the other team puts their worst defender on her, and it's a mistake. Lexi running the floor, getting an easy bucket. She hardly gets those. Most of them are pretty tough. She deserves it running the floor like that. She does. That's a nice – Mm -hmm. Tyler Frierson is our freshman. Again, she's got a nice soft touch around the basket, and she's actually a pretty good passer. And on our zone offense, we put her in the short corner so we can have some people dive and flash, and she does a great job hitting the open person. Really happy for Carly. She's been great in practice and deserved an opportunity, and you see her get an extra bucket there. Now to the Oakland game. Lexi doing a little work down there at 5'10". I, I can never get enough of watching that kid score over big people. <laughs> Making the extra pass over there to Mac. Knocking down threes again. She was really, really good. I think that was Lexi again. Offensive rebound and put back. Um, a little out of bounds play where it's the only play that Mac actually takes the ball out of bounds for a three. She set herself up really nice for that shot. She did. It was it was a really good execution. And Lexi again rebounded and somebody hitting the floor. 
<laughs> and that number 10 would be Emily Vogelbull. <laughs> but just for one game. What's up with that? Why the number change? Um, you know. Uniform issue? Well, yeah, I, okay. we're not real sure what that number three is. Um, <laughs> so I asked her if she kept it for memorabilia. She said she didn't. Um, so. <laughs> They had a three in the corner. I'm not sure who that was. Maybe Simone. We've got Carly in the game again. And Chelsea going to work. Lexi's always there to rebound any miss, isn't she? I'm telling you, the, the defensive strategy for a lot of these teams, and that's why Max able to take that one dribble pull up there, they commit so many resources when Chelsea shoots that it usually leaves Lexi open. And we've got Simone getting the steal there and an easy layup. Again, whenever we allow our defense to create our offense, we look like a completely different team. Bob Noss uh, texted me just a moment ago here in the room that Lexi needs 19 points for 1,000. She does, um, and he does a great job of keeping me updated on that too. <laughs> he does, and because uh, you know it matters to the kids. They they are team players, and, and they want us to win games, but they work really hard, and their individual accomplishments are, are part of the reason they stay motivated. So I don't have one problem with it at all. And what really helps to stay motivated too is getting victories. And you know, one thing in that game too, we talked about it before the game, and that had to be with uh, the community involvement of this team. And uh, people were probably wondering, why, why were the coaches wearing all white, you know, with the different uniforms? And it had to do with uh, awareness for uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, correct? It did. Um, that was our official Think, think Pink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our think official pink. think pink game. And, and oh, trust me, as much as we wear sweatsuits and our kids get these very pretty pink shoes, uh, we talk a lot more about what it means and what it represents in the KL Fund. And everything that uh, that surrounds, especially in women's basketball. Um, it's a really big deal. Um, there's a lot of fundraisers that go on. Uh, there'll be one that we participate in later with free throws, and so you all will hear about that. Um, but it's just important, I think, that they know that there's things going on around us that are more important than just – the 40 minutes of basketball so you know it's to help bring awareness and it did bring awareness and you know for something you know so serious and a worthwhile cause till you can have fun with it a little bit and coach brown was saying to me uh, during the game he came and he saw coach freeman uh, you're one of your number one assistant and he said he looks like the good humor man i'm telling poor keith <laughs> i mean but he he was getting some uh, some flack from some other folks he too, was, wasn't he? was, the yeah. Oakland staff. Um, and again, those are, they're really, really nice guys. Yeah. And um, he's got a good relationship with them. So it was all in good fun. But they told him he looked like one of the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> and um, it, it spilled into Twitter, I believe. There's uh -huh. some actual tweets about it. So they got some pictures um, of him? Yeah. So okay. they gave him a really hard time. Um, but I intentionally don't get his pink shoes okay. um, so that he doesn't have to wear those. <laughs> He probably would. He's a good sport. He would. He Keith would. would do whatever I asked him to do. He's, yeah. he's so awesome that way, um, especially for the team. But it's okay. He didn't have to He didn't have to do that. So now since he's been compared to the Backstreet Boys, does he have a little dance move or something for you? He like? definitely does not have a dance move. <laughs> and if, now that might be where he draws the line. If I ask him to do a dance move, that might be my first no. Okay. Um, so no, he won't be doing that. But um, we, we can talk about because Keith's a great guy. I mean, we talk yeah. to him all the time, and he's an he excellent coach. He is. You know, a former head coach you know, with Valparaiso, and he's – right there with you and uh, he does an outstanding job with his team and that really kind of leads me into the next thing we want to talk about is your assistants we don't talk about them enough i know we've talked about them on a few occasions but you say they're there there for you and you feel that you have one of the best staffs around i do i mean and, and people can say whatever they want and, and i don't care which way you look at it um if you look at, at pedigree i mean we've got notre dame and tennessee um, in DePaul and obviously Kim, as we call the goat in the office, but she doesn't like that very much, but we, we tease <laughs> her anyway. Um, so from, we've got people who have played some high level basketball and then we've got people who have coached at high levels as well. And, and Keith is obviously the most experienced out of all of us. And I say it over and over again that there isn't anyone who I would have rather have by my side in my first head coaching job than Keith. Um, he's patient. Uh, he has the best ideas. Uh, he allows me to to have my own opinion without feeling like I have to listen to him. Because, again, you can imagine how that can be when you've got someone who's been a, a head coach for 20 years on your staff, yeah. how easy it could be for me to doubt myself with him there and just do whatever he says or ask him questions every time. And it's not that dynamic at all. 
you know, I, I get an opportunity to grow. And it's kind of with some training wheels on, mm-hmm. you know, because I can kind of look at him and, and he'll say, you're fine. That's good. Um, and it's uh, I, I can't I can't even explain how helpful it is. Basketball knowledge, too. He's right there. He's like a walking encyclopedia for basketball. And I thought maybe he lives in this area. In fact, he I does. think he lives around here. He does. So I thought maybe he might come up since he maybe knew we were talking about it. You know, Keith has a very strict regiment. He is working out right now. Oh, it's oh, just down the corner here, right? Yeah, At the yeah. Y? He is working out. Okay. So that is. He's um, got to keep those moves, you know, Backstreet Boys, I, so, right? <laughs> Again, poor King. <laughs> He's in He's the like, office <laughs> with all these women and, and, and this women's basketball team, and, and yet he doesn't he doesn't hesitate one day to yeah. be exactly what we need him to be. I could yeah. never be him. If you if I could picture being on a men's staff with men's players, and I'm the only female around. I don't know how he does it, but he figures it out. So yeah, I'm thankful for it. He's a great guy, and Wright State's really great. It's, it, it, we're grateful to have somebody like him here with us on your staff. For sure. I feel the same way. Trust me. All right. Got a big day coming up here soon. Can you believe it? At the end of the year, you got the senior day coming up. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. When we come back, see, in this business, we call that a tease. And gotcha. we'll be back with more. This is the Katrina Merriweather Show from TJ Chumps and Huber Heights. This is Wright State University Basketball. Please join us for Wright State's annual Arts Gala March 24th. Enjoy amazing performances by our incredible art students, plus fine dining and auction items too. All proceeds support art scholarships. That's Arts Gala on March 24th. And welcome back. We've got about 15 minutes so uh, remaining here on the Katrina Merriweather Show. Of course, coming up uh, this Saturday is the senior day. Uh, you get some seniors. Uh, they've come through the system already. Uh, this is their fourth year, and it's hard to believe you got to this point. The game will be against Northern Kentucky. We can talk about that in a second. But a uh, chance for you to talk about uh, how special these student athletes have been for you, Coach Merriweather. Anybody who knows what it's like to play for uh, Mike Bradbury, like it, it's really tough. There's a lot of high expectations um he demands the best out of kids and lexi smith started in a four-person class um and she is the only one who has made it the four years um to senior night this upcoming saturday and again it, it just it's a testament to her where she came to Wright state and she believed in what we were doing and uh, she decided she was going to stick through it because she didn't play a lot her first two years. Yeah. She played behind uh, Rochelle Vanderkeel, yeah. and um, she stayed the course and, and continued to get better and grow in and, and, and a system that is very difficult for young people to play um, and in a time where if you don't get to play, everybody wants to transfer. So Lexi, again, stuck it out with this, so I'm really excited for her to celebrate the four years that she's been in a Wright State uniform. What's it been like, you know, for her? You already talked about how difficult and the challenge it is for her, but is she the type of player that, you know, we're not in the locker room all the time and around this team all the time. Is she just somebody who's quiet, just does her job, or is she kind of a, a leader also in that aspect? She is a leader by example. Um, Alexi, again, well, she was hurt very early in the season to where by the time we played Missouri, she had only practiced for two days. And it really threw her off because she never misses anything. She's never hurt. And so she didn't hardly know how to respond to it. Um, and I think that it honestly bothers her a little to this day that need never quite healed up, but she just refused to not play. Um, and, of course, the training staff is okay with her playing with that amount of pain, and she said that she doesn't want to sit out. She's supposed to keep playing. Um, so that's, that's Lexi in a nutshell. So you think she may be thinking about it a little bit because, you know, they'll be honored, you know, uh, at the game uh, with Northern Kentucky. Has she thought about, uh, you know, it – it might be, it's coming to a close soon. You don't want it to come to a close, but, you know, are you getting closer and closer? I think so. I think her and Chelsea both understand uh, that they've got some unfinished business from a year ago, and while we dropped a couple of games we didn't expect to, um, I think that we can all accept that we had a rough patch of competition. Those are really good teams. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're looking to finish out one game at a time on a very high note with these seniors, and I think that they're, far, they're very focused on that. All right, we'll talk about Chelsea Welch. You just mentioned her a moment ago. Senior. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? I mean, the kid comes in, um, sits out a year, and you don't know what to expect from her, and then she comes in and just blows everybody away um, with her potential that then maturated into some some actual results. And that wasn't just her stats. It was what she was able to do for this team. And people can look at her points and all that. But if you just pay attention to her when she plays, 
how much the ball is in her hands, how many plays that she makes for other people, how much attention she draws and then makes the correct pass, and then what she does on the defensive end. And when I challenge her, like I did on Saturday, when she wasn't shooting the ball well, I subbed and moved her to the four, and she starts rebounding. That's how she ends up with this double-double. And she is always willing to do whatever I ask her to do and whatever the team needs to do for us to win. What about head coach? You know, when you have this group of seniors that uh, you'll be saying, well, not so long because you still have some games left in the tournament coming up. What will it be like for you for this for this group? Yeah, it's pretty emotional. And, you know, when you think about it, if it seems like yesterday I was in Chicago at home with Flossmore recruiting Lexi when no one else really wanted her because they had no idea what the, her potential was. And, and I was fine with that. I felt like we got a steal, you know, back then. And, and as it all turns out, she's a second-team all-conference player. And, and I think that it says so much about her as a person, too. So both of them together is just so tough. And when I think about this team without the two of them, we've got a lot of work to do in the offseason. So luckily we're not there yet. Well, you've got a lot of young players, you know, on this team that you're hoping to see some improvement from during the year. And, you know, you see what happens on the floor. But in during practice, how, you know, the upperclassmen, you know, carry themselves throughout. You're hoping some of that that they pick up on and they can see that, they can absorb that, you know, from these seniors who have been really vital to your program for four years. Well, they better. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what choice we have besides to realize what we're losing in Chelsea and Lexi. And again, not just from a statistical standpoint, but like these kids, they care about the success of Wright State women's basketball. And what happens when you start to have this tradition of success, people think that it just happens. You just walk into practice, go through the drills, put on a uniform, tie up your shoes, and we're going to win, right? And um, I think we learned that the hard way with, with some of our young ones uh, throughout the middle of conference. And I am hoping that they, they pick up those winning ways um, from those two in particular. What about on the floor with the younger players? I want to ask you right now, have you seen the improvement? I know your expectation level, not just you know basketball play, but all the things you expect from the student athletes. Have you seen improvement from them at this point as you get close to the end of the year? I think that there's been significant improvement in them, um, more so them understanding how serious it is. Sometimes when you have a very strong upperclassman, these young ones think that they can come in and kind of take their time because they don't play a lot of minutes in the beginning. So they just kind of back up and like, hey, I'll be happy with my couple of points. And then things happen. Again, Lexi got hurt early, which put a freshman, Nia Sumter, in a starting position. And um, I think that that was a roller coaster for her because when Lexi came back, obviously her minutes decreased and she still had to figure out a way to stay motivated and keep fighting no matter how many minutes she got or did not get during a game. So I think that they've grown a lot um, from being little baby freshmen to understanding how important every possession is, valuing every single possession. And I think that's the probably the biggest thing that I've seen. As a group with this team, do you see or you, you're getting a feeling of uh, – of a sense of urgency as you get towards the end of the season. I think so. Um, again, we've got some people that, in their opinion, we should not have lost to. Um, now, I don't know why they think that, besides the fact that it says right state on our jersey and not right state on theirs. So <laughs> we, we have to keep working, working on that and working with them on that. But I, I feel like they think that there's something left to prove. And I think at some point, after we won all those games in a row, they thought that it was going to be just like last year. Like, we, it was going to be okay. We're just we're going to just keep winning. And um, I think that was a good wake-up call, and we needed that because I think we're back to being a little hungrier than we were uh, before and just taking things for granted. Well, you said before the season, the Horizon League women's basketball, it's been a big upgrade, especially with IUPUI coming into the league. Also, the other programs have gotten much better. You're playing one of those teams in Northern Kentucky coming up on Saturday for Senior Day. But Coach, Hang on. We're going to be right back. We'll talk about that matchup coming back when we return for our final segment. The Katrina Merriweather Show live from TJ Chumps in Fairborn. This is Wright State University Basketball. What does it mean to be a pioneer reaching your full potential? It means being bold. No, bigger than bold. Monumental. Where would we be if we ceased at the first, you can't do that? How would we advance if we stopped in our tracks every time we heard, hey you, move back? We develop thick skin when our position wishes we'd stay soft. Against resistance, our persistence will pay off. At Wright State, our goal remains central. We are the pioneers of potential.
And we're back for the final segment. Well, the time is moving by fast. Wright State in action coming up against Northern Kentucky on Saturday. As we mentioned earlier, it is senior day. A couple of great seniors uh, playing their uh, senior day when they're going to be you know, celebrated uh, for all the achievements that they have been able to bring here to Wright State. And, uh, Coach, we were talking about the opponent coming up, and that's the Norse of Northern Kentucky. This team comes in with a three-game winning streak right now, and you said the first time you played, and this is a very dangerous team because they've had so they have some really good young players on this squad. They do, and just like if we had to play our freshmen 25 minutes a game, we would be fairly inconsistent too. And I think that that's what you're dealing with with them. They play really hard. They're well coached, uh, and they have the ability to make a lot of shots. Um, again, when they beat Green Bay, they made 10 threes that game. So you have to get out there and guard them, and because they're scrappy and they're all over the place, like and they change defenses, like they do all these things um, that make them really dangerous. Well, Molly Glick is their leading scorer. She has what, like 50 plus, 54 three pointers, you know, made on the season. Obviously, that draws the attention of your defense, but she's not the only player out there that can hurt you. No, she's not. And if you take a look at their stats, they've got about four or five kids that average between seven and, and five points. And while that doesn't sound like a lot, that's because they come out sometimes and they get 15 and other times they get four. And so there you go. You know, you've got your, your nine and a half point average or, or whatever at that stage. And that's, that's why it looks that way. It's kind of like, oh, they can't score. But, well, they can. They just don't have the same score every game. So everybody kind of takes a turn. So when you're trying to come up with your defensive strategy against them, it's not so easy like it is for us. People say, oh, either you're going to – Focus on Chelsea mm -hmm. and make everybody else beat you or try to shut down everybody else and let Chelsea go crazy. Well, you can't do that to them because you don't know which one of them is going to get 15 to 20 points that game. Even if you build a lead against this type of team, you've seen that before, they're the type of team that's going to play you the entire game. 40 minutes of basketball, they're going to play all the way till the end. And you have a big lead, and all of a sudden it may disappear, and then they are right there, and they got their confidence, and uh, they can knock you off. No question. And, again, their coach is really tough, and then she's tough on them, and, and I think they reflect her. And Anybody who's been at our games, leads don't mean much of anything. Um, yeah, I guess we think it's kind of fun to give them away and see if we can hold on. So um, <laughs> It's not fun for you. <laughs> it is not. It is quite disturbing and annoying all at the same time. Um, however, again, I, I do get it. I think the mentality is we, we come out really hard, really strong. We get up and, and then try to, to coast maybe a little bit or, or do something a little different than we did to get the lead, and that's where we are. But doing that against Northern Kentucky um, could definitely be an issue. You know, that's the next game up, a few games, and then you've got Motor City Madness, you know, coming up at the end of the year. And very interesting, you look at the league standings right now, uh, there are a lot more teams that can compete for the championship this year. And you look at the schedule ahead right now on the screen here at TJ Chumps in Fairborn after the Northern Kentucky game, Cleveland State, IUPUI, UIC, and then it is tournament time. So still – a lot will be determined as far as seeding is concerned between now and when you head to Detroit. Well, before these two games we just played, uh, we were in fifth. And because we won those two, now we're in third. And, you know, we'll just see what happens with everyone else. And it's unfortunate when you drop some games you couldn't because you lose the ability to control your own destiny. You kind of got to sit back and, and hope some things shake differently for some different people. But we're just going to finish as strong as we can. And, and whatever seed we get, we're just going to play it out. For the players who returned this year from last year, you know, having that experience, you know, up there at uh, the Joe Lewis Arena, you know, that's obviously going to help them. You know, as you prepare for the uh, tournament this year, you've got a brand new arena, you know, that you're going into, but still, you know, the format is the same. You know what to expect beforehand. You as a coach and a coaching staff, you don't really like to talk about it, I know, because a lot can be, but just asking you this question, you know, where we, obviously you'd like to be a number one seed, obviously. you know what I'm saying? You know, obviously, you know, in that situation or one right. or two, right. you know, so that's really what you're playing right now. You're trying to win every game and just see what happens, you know, at the end of the season. Pretty much. And, and everyone wants to be your one or two because you get a bye after the first game. And, and so, it, it, but again, everyone will argue that that's a good thing or a bad thing. It just, it just depends. Sometimes playing just back to back to back and hunkering down and having to play 40 minutes and the toughest team win is, actually benefits us a little bit. Um, we're not a real big rest team. I don't know how much good rest does us. It's kind of, again, just hunker down and get it done type of situation. So I'm not overly concerned about it. 
um, we're going to roll the ball out and play no matter who we play, no matter what seat we are. Well, coming up next, it's the Norse of Northern Kentucky on Saturday. Best of luck to you, Coach. And Thank one you. final thing before we go, Coach Brown is here for the men's uh, coaches show coming up here. And he just walked in late, but didn't Coach Freeman say that he's going to donate that white suit for Coach Brown? Yes, <laughs> and I think that they're going to put together a little two-step like the Backstreet yeah. Boys. Yeah, I can't That's wait to I see heard. that. <laughs> All That's right, what Coach. I heard. All right, well, best of luck against Northern Kentucky. Coach Nagy's show is coming up next. Stay with us. We'll be back here at TJ Chumpson Fairborn in just a moment. This is Wright State University Basketball.